This is every setting that you need to optimize for Valorant from visual settings to performance boost and overall gameplay experience. This setting right here is going to be personal preference but for people who deal with anxiety when people are spectating them or when they're in clutch situations, I would definitely suggest turning off the show spectator count option. This allows you to not have to be visually reminded that there are players watching you and this can help with anxiety a little bit. But speaking of settings that are preference, another one that I have on is the team mute key. This allows you to press a single keybind to mute your entire team. There's a ton of different times I'll be in a clutch and my team is arguing so I'm not able to fully focus so you can just hit your bind and lock in and win the round. So one of the settings we're going to be turning on is going to our audio settings and turning on HRTF. HRTF is a setting that is good for locating enemies' footsteps, sounds of reloading, dropping weapons, and more simulated surround sounds. Next, we are going to turn on the auto equip weapon prioritize and setting it to strongest. And then we're going to also check the don't auto equip melee option. This option makes it so that after you use your utility, like using a jet dash for example, or a raise satchel, or your teleport, you won't pull out your melee once you get out of the animation. And your rifle will be out so you're ready to take a fight and you don't get caught with your pants down. The next thing we're going to do is turn on the shooting error graph. This graph will basically show you a visual breakdown on when you are inaccurate because of your poor movement. I'm sure you all know that you are inaccurate when moving, but sometimes we forget to stop and rush our shots. So this will visually tell you that you need to focus on your movement a tad bit more. You can also turn on the movement error in your crosshair settings if you prefer, as it allows for you to tell a tad bit easier when you are inaccurate because of bad movement, but I find it a bit distracting so either of these settings will do the same job. In my opinion, it's just your preference. As you guys can see from my minimap, I can see a view of the entire map, but probably it might look different for you. These are your minimap settings that you're going to want to change. I have mine on 0.8 for minimap size. Minimap zoom I have on 1 and I have minimap vision cones on on and show map region name always. This allows you to learn the callouts if you don't have them. I just like it for visual preference. And you know, you're definitely going to want to put it on fixed so it doesn't rotate as you are moving around the map. I think it's quite obnoxious and hard to tell what's going on. And then I have fixed orientation based on side and I do not have myself centered. This allows you to see the entire map without having to open up your map. So if an enemy is using utility on B and your team isn't calming it and you're playing A, you can always know what is going on on the map at all times. This will help you with rotations and game sense. Next, I'm going to talk about crosshair settings. I have an entire YouTube video with a bunch of crosshairs you can use already on my YouTube channel, but I'm going to show you guys a few crosshairs that I think you guys should use because I see a lot of people rocking the default crosshair. So first, we're going to start off with the tens crosshair. It's a very simple crosshair. It's just inner lines 1422. I'll have the crosshair code in the description. And I'm also going to show you right after that, we got the curry crosshair. It's a nice little white dot. He's rocking that outlines 12 crosshair with center dot 12 as well with inner lines off and outer lines off. I'll leave this also in the description for you guys. And then we're going to go to the grim crosshair, which I actually like. It's pretty unique. He's got the inner lines 14320 crosshair and outer lines are off as well. It looks pretty good, but if you want it, it will be in the description for you guys, so don't worry. I also have the PRX something dot crosshair for you guys that will be in the description. I will show you it if you don't want to copy the code, but he's got outline 0.619, outline thickness is 1, and then center dot is 1-2. Very simple. Finally, I got the ass bass crosshair. He's got a little white crosshair. His settings are inner lines 1420, and then he's got outer lines turned off as well. Now let's talk about your in-game sensitivity. Granted, this is completely personal preference what sensitivity that you are using, but there's probably a good chance that you are playing with a sensitivity that you aren't able to actually control at the highest level. For reference, the average EDPI, which stands for effective dots per inch, which is basically just a short form for saying your in-game sensitivity and your DPI combined, which for pro players in all of Valorant, the average is 280 EDPI. So if you're on 400 DPI, the in-game sense average would be 0.7 and it would be 0.35 if you were on 800 DPI and so on and so forth. So if you want to calculate your EDPI, just multiply your in-game sensitivity by your DPI and you'll get your EDPI. 
if you get a crazy high or crazy low EDPI, it might be good to check if you're able to track the strafing bots in the range correctly. And if you're over flicking, lower your sense. And if you're under flicking, raise your sense. Keep repeating this process until you feel completely comfortable and you feel like you are staying on target as efficiently as possible. So the next setting depends on the polling rate of your mouse. If you have a high polling rate mouse, you are going to want to turn on a raw input buffer. This setting will drastically reduce input lag as it allows mouse inputs to be sent directly to the game and will bypass your operating system. After that, we're going to turn on the show blood setting. In my opinion, it makes it much easier for you to be able to tell if you're hitting an enemy when wall banging, which gives you some free info sometimes whether an enemy is playing a certain angle like single box on ice box, for example. So you could communicate with your team. Hey, there's a little noob camper sitting behind this box. Throw a viper molly at him or whatever you want to say. And then I also have the show corpses turned off. This setting is actually fairly helpful since sometimes a teammate or enemy's corpse could actually block your vision or possibly distract you. And that isn't what we want. So we turn this off and it drops little icons instead of a body, which makes it easier and makes your game more clean. And it also really helps Sage players as it's a little easier to tell which is an enemy corpse and which is friendly when attempting to use your ultimate. I also suggest for my Viper players turning on player color outline to purple and turning on bloom. This setting makes enemies inside of your Viper ult have a nice glow and allows you to see them slightly earlier which is a pretty big advantage if you are in your viper ultimate so i'd 100 percent suggest turning this on if that's the case after that we're going to talk about first person handedness there's some data to suggest that depending on your eyes a certain view model may be better and since 75 percent of people are right eye dominant which makes you have a better reaction time and aim on left-handed mode we need to check which one is best for you so extend your arms as far as you can and make a triangle with your hands Focus on a single object in your room like your doorknob for example and then close your left eye. If the object remains in view then your right eye is dominant. If the object is no longer visible then your left eye would be dominant. And if nothing happens you're one of the few people who does not have a dominant eye. So there's actually some data that proves that having a higher DPI will actually cause less input lag or input latency. So this works up until around 1600 DPI so anything 400 or lower actually does have slightly more input lag than 800 or 1600. So I personally use 800 DPI but you can use all the way up to 1600 DPI. So first we're going to want to make sure multi-threaded rendering is turned on. This is really important and it allows for all of your corpse on your processors to work making you have better FPS. After that we're going to turn material quality to low texture quality to low, detail quality to low, UI quality to low, big net off, vsync off, vsync definitely adds input delay. And then I turn my anti-aliasing to none and my filtering to one X. Improved clarity I also turn off as well as beta experimental sharpening. Now Bloom will make your game look more visually appealing, but it will take a little bit of your graphics card usage. So I keep this on, but typically if you have a lower end PC, make sure to turn this one off. And for distortion and cast shadows, make sure to turn these off as well for maximum performance. You're also going to want to turn on NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency and have this on or on plus boost if available. This will lower input delay and help out with your PC's performance. And finally, we're going to go to our graphic settings on our desktop and turn on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling and then click the browse option and then go to our Riot client in our Riot games folder and just double click on this, go to options and set this to high performance. This will help with your GPU's performance if you're running on a lower one. 